So welcome to another vlog. Today I'd like to read a letter that came in in response to the last one. It's from a student named Maddie. I think she's in university or maybe a recent graduate. So she wrote, Dear Dr. Kim, thank you for your recent video on choosing a career. I'm not looking at a job in healthcare, but I found what you said toward the end of the video really encouraging and smart. I've never heard anyone put it the way you did to get to a place where I, I am needed more than I need my job. My question for you is this, what if I know what I'm interested in, but I'm not sure how, to, how I can make a living from it? My parents have been really supportive and I feel like I will let them down if I don't get a job in tech or finance. I appreciate all that you share. Sincerely, Maddie. So thank you to Maddie for sharing that question. Maddie, I can definitely tell you that I can relate to your angst. When I was just graduating from high school, my parents were about two years into starting their own church. So at the time, uh, we didn't have too much money, and I think we were barely covering our expenses. So my mindset was to try to get through university and graduate studies as quickly as I could, as efficiently as I could, so that I could start a job and start making money to support my family and also to take care of myself. So I went up to Alaska and I was working in a rural area and work was plentiful. So I, I was working quite a lot and I was able to pay off my student loans and even get to my, my parents to a more comfortable place, which I was very grateful to do. And once I had some savings, I actually decided that I wanted to move down to Northern California uh, to work at a fasting clinic. I was very interested in water fasting, both personally and professionally. So that's what I did. And uh, the clinic that I stayed at, it was just paradise for me. There were fruit trees all around, uh, pears, plums, apples, figs, things I'd never seen before up close, uh, even persimmon trees along the road to the clinic. And I, I really enjoyed my time out there and I was working and as I, as I worked there, I couldn't ignore this instinct that I had uh, that told me that I should go to Korea to learn the language. And it might sound a little uh, irrational, but I did have a specific reason for wanting to do this and it was that while I wanted to be and tried to be a good son to my parents, I definitely had some frustrations and some resentment that I wished that I could express to them uh, through conversation, but there was no real way for me to do that. Uh, with my father, I didn't really talk to him too much uh, on such things, it's just not really a part of the culture to do that. Uh, with my mom, I, I wanted to, but I just couldn't because she spoke mostly Korean and I spoke all English. And we could really only talk about basic everyday things. So even the word resentment uh, would have been something I wouldn't have known how to, how to say. So that was really the reason why I wanted to go to Korea, to leave my career on hold and I think from the outside, it did look like a bit of an irrational or foolish decision, but it got to a point for me where I felt like it was something I had to do. And so I did it. And looking back, I do believe that it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Uh, there I, I met a really good friend uh, who eventually became the best man at my wedding and I was able to learn enough Korean uh, to be able to have these conversations with my mom. And gosh, this, this was almost 16, 18 years ago, but I'm not trying to say that my relationship with my parents and my mom is perfectly peaceful today, but being able to express thoughts back and forth, to have more understanding of our emotions and what we're really feeling about issues that go beyond the everyday. It's brought me enormous relief. It's been very cathartic in many ways. Uh, to give you just a specific example, so I'm not too vague, um, my parents are Orthodox Christian and I was raised in the church. 
but my mom and I see some things uh, very differently. Uh, one of the things that she likes to talk about or she likes to hint at on occasion is the state of my faith and what I can do to improve my faith. And for me, I feel like it's impossible for any of us to know where another person is at. So we can't really assess another person's faith. This is self-evident to me. But for her, she has very she has genuine beliefs of certain markers that would indicate how good a person's faith is. And specifically, she would look at how often you go to church. And I think a real marker for her is if a church has given you a title, perhaps you're a deacon or an elder. I think being an elder is probably the top of the mountain for her. And she'll sometimes look to relatives or friends whose children have become an elder at a church and she'll wistfully comment about how great that person's faith is that they're an elder and it really is as my my children would put it it's a real trigger for me when i hear those things and when i hear those hints of assessing my faith and how i need to become an elder as well so that i can also uh, show everyone i have good faith makes me crazy and I do need to express to her why I disagree uh, it's not something that I can just kind of nod and, and move on with my day on so uh, not surprisingly being able to have these discussions with her even though they can get heated even though there can be some bad feelings even uh, it makes our relationship better in every way it's more intimate. We actually know where we stand on different things. And I would much rather have that with everybody in my life than to have things stay more superficial and have there be this large emotional gulf in understanding and, and wanting to understand each other. So I shared all of that because I'm not... I'm not quite sure that I can say that making that move at that point in my life to go to Korea and learn Korean was helpful to my career, but it enhanced my life, it enriched my life in a way where I, I really can't imagine life without this ability to speak with my mom and, and other Koreans as well when the opportunity arises on, on a meaningful level. So my suggestion to you would be to, of course, you have to consider your finances and your family's financial circumstances. And if you need to work to be able to take care of your basic needs, your living, uh, go ahead and do that, of course. But above and beyond that, you should use all of your time to pursue your interest. Um, anything that makes you feel fulfilled and, and grateful to be alive is something that you should pursue at all times. Uh, it may not be clear in the moment how that could lead to something good, but I can almost guarantee that it will lead to something good. And it reminds me of what Steve Jobs once said, which is that we pursue these different interests in life and they're all little dots. And at some point down the road, we can connect these dots in a way that's unique and meaningful to us. I think that's very true. So I'm confident that will be true for you as well if you do listen to your instincts. And I wish you the best of luck. If uh, anyone else has any thoughts on this topic that they would like to share, please go ahead and just use the comment section below. And if you have any questions, that you'd like to see me address in a, in a session like this, please let me know through the comments. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more suggestions on how to improve your mobility and health. And for our most recent self-care suggestions, please use the link here to subscribe to our newsletter. All of this helps us produce more useful content. Thank you and see you again soon.